Hello, everybody. Hey, we got it right tonight. We got everything lined up perfectly. Good Fantastic. evening. Hello, hello, Facebook, and hello, Twitter, because tonight oh, oh. we are dual Why? live streaming to both Facebook and Twitter as our plans for world domination continue. Wow. That's not in any way scary, is it, that we're going to be not. out there amongst all sorts of people that we've probably not even spoken to. How scary yeah. is that? I was tempted to wear my black narrow jacket tonight and have dirt sat on my lap. So <laughs> <I'd> be... <laughs> oh, well, well, funnily enough, I, every time I speak to you, that cat is on your lap. No, he's gone out now. So oh, he's okay. Oh, I, I should point out to everybody that I, I, I was out walking and I literally came to the front door about 10 minutes to go to the broadcast. So note to self, don't do that in the future. So how are you, Mr. P? I'm fine. I'm all right. Yeah, um, it's it's yeah been an interesting few days. I'm uh, not too bad at all. So it's uh, it, it's good to um, to get back to our new sh show. I, I I'm sure you're aware. I did I did I went actually went solo the other night, which mm. was a which was a deeply strange experience. As I'm normally flying alongside you, but to to actually gain my solo wings was a was a was a very strange experience but was that was that was that was that was that a kind of phil collins solo or was it a member of kiss solo i'm gonna suggest bearing in mind that i can't abide kiss or anything that they stand for but i'm gonna go for the phil collins solo because that seems far more up my street than anything that the i don't know the horrible american noise band oh you've you've upset brilliant. two people already two we got two angry faces here which i think are probably to do with kiss so <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh well I, i'm not entirely sure where i where i go with that really i i, I sh yes okay I'll, I'll i'll sort of i'll move on from my I think you should kiss that goodbye. Let's just say a uh, good evening to Douglas Hunter, Tony McEwen, Andy Brandon, Peter Marshall, Mike Williams, Ian Goldstraw, Pavel, Stuart Bremner, Greg, Ivan, and oh, Mr. Farmer is watching. Best behaviour. Hello, Andrew. <coughs> yes, I, if I'd have known, I would have no. put on a shirt and tie knowing that Mr. Farmer was going to be watching us. Right, we have, what, well, I think we've said what have you been up to. I have been building this Svesda. Sherman, which is uh, don't worry about the clamps. That was modern induced fluffery. That was. It's a very good kit. It's it's a superb kit. What do you think? This what is it? Twenty five quid. Ridiculous money for it. Indeed. It's slightly different approach to Mir because everything's kind of flat pack in many respects. But it does the breakdown does mean Svesda can put so much more detail onto some of the bits and I, I'm honestly when I get around to painting it some of the little casting numbers and things that are on the hull and the turret it's just eye-wateringly good yeah so I'm, I'm enjoying that from the photographs that I've seen of it it, it looks really nice yeah and, no, it, and having great... seen some of the other Zvezda kits they they are extraordinarily tidy in places which reminds me that I've still got that pansier to make at some point um, when I stopped building kits that were released before 1975. Uh, <laughs> when you stopped building kits from the previous century. And, yeah, well, yes, indeed. Speaking of which, I've, I have actually done some more work on my uh, on my Chieftain, which you will be no doubt um, I'm pleased to see. It, it now has, as you can see, it now has a turret and everything. It's sort of there. I looked at it this afternoon, and I'm actually thinking that the painting on the vehicle might be finished. Oh. It, it may well be done. I, I, I sort of might go back to it tomorrow and tidy things up, but I'm a bit bored of putting dust on it now, so I want to move on and put some... I've got some accessories that have got to go on, and then the crew. So I might actually be, finally be able to get the Chieftain, which I've spoken to you about every week for the last at least two months, finished this week. And so now I, I feel that I can't really take the Mickey out of you over the over the the Italeri Jeep debacle, as I'm now calling it, when I've spent the thick end of two months building a chieftain kit that should have taken me. Yeah, but that Jeep that Jeep was just that Jeep should have been five days. It 
I've got watch, watch this Sherman fly together. The Sherman's probably got about 10 times the number of parts in that Jeep, and yet it is, it's been about three days solid. But I've, I'm just enjoying this. I just, I was sat in the workshop yesterday, and it was, I think I might have commented on this online, that it was just one of those Saturday afternoons, horrible weather outside, dark, by about three o'clock, dark in the afternoon, football on the radio, I'm building a model, and that could have been 2020, it could have been 1980, it could have been any number of years since I've been building kits. Just that magic kind of, those magic hours when you're sat mm -hmm. building a model, and it's it never goes away. I think and it never goes away. And don't you find, I, I, I don't know whether it's a psychological thing, I, I, I always say I'm more productive in the summer because obviously the nights are lighter and you, you sort of get more done because you've got sort of more daylight. But there is something wonderful about spending a wet Saturday afternoon when you can hear the rain beading off the windows, building a model. I always, my modelling season always, I always think of it restarting with the football season. It's just I'm more productive then. But Yeah, it's weird. Mm, right. We have... Indeed. A number of things to talk about tonight, okay. and uh, an interesting mix of things as well, as befits the interesting modelling company. So I'm going to kick off tonight with Italeri's new Semavente M4275-18. Now, this, as you can see by the great big blurb up in the top left-hand corner, this is a brand new kit. This is nothing to do with their original kit from the early 1970s. I even Googled some sprue shots and instruction sheets of this kit to do a comparison. It is an entirely different kit. It's not a reworking. It is new in every sense of the phrase. Now, the Semavente, as you can see, it's not a very big tank. Well, a self-propelled gun, I should say. And there were about... I think they built about 260-odd of these vehicles. They were based on the M13-40 tank. Unlike the M13-40, these were actually quite successful, and they were quite an effective self-propelled gun. So despite – well, this is the weird thing with tanks, is that we tend to think of them as being produced in kind of T34 numbers, and then you look at things like Tigers, and you suddenly realise that actually they were produced in relatively no numbers. But this – only 262 of a built. So, you know, we, we also had a, a kit of this from Tamir in 1975 as well. So, and we've had the Eshi kits in 72nd scale. So it is a very interesting subject, but it's nice to have a new kit from Italeri. So as we're going to, we'll flick through the picks and kind of talk about them as we're going. But Mr. P, it has to be asked, have you ever built a Semavente? I have. I've built, ah. the, I've built ah. the Tamir kit. Ah. Um, I, I built the Tamir kit. Um, in fact, I, I built the the the, the, ta the gun tank as well. I built both versions mm. um, of this vehicle. I really like it. It's it's quite a nice size. It's sort of um, Panzer II sized. It's mm. a, it's it's a nice little vehicle. It's got lots of detail and lots of little features all over it as well. Mm. And also because it was used you know in the italian campaign and and also in the desert as well it gives you the option to have lots of stowage on it i think i, I coated the glasses plate on on at least one of mine with sandbags and that kind of thing mm. i really really like it I, I i'm i'm certainly looking forward to seeing what this how this is different from from those previously seen i've not built the the Italeri version uh, although i have as you would imagine studied it closely bearing mm. in mind that francois built a few of these things we'll come uh, to that in a moment <laughs> um so um but the tamir but i've certainly built one of the tamir kits and yeah and i really like it it's got lots of intricate little details i'm assuming as well if they if they're producing the chassis for this that they will actually do a gun tank at some point well that's that is actually a very good point i would imagine because Tamiya did the same. They did the, the chassis, then they did both versions. Italeri have done this. Eshi did it as well with the 72nd scale kit. So I would yeah. not be surprised. We're very good at predicting things on this show because we did a mini art prediction, which came true. Yeah. So, <laughs> But I would not be surprised. Interesting with this release is that you actually get some crew figures. Mm, in, I can see, you see that, yeah. In the set as well. Oh, so I've got the same, I've got the same sprue there twice. Whoops-a-daisy. 
also rather curious you get some stowage there does seem to be kind of a bit of an interior in there as well and, and yes looking at the way the looking at the way everything is broken down it does seem to indicate these this does look like common bits that would go between yeah you know both both versions there's another figure there as well which appears to be in kind of italian desert dress so again that i mean that is that's just like a common sprue yeah so but rather curiously rubber band tracks in this one i can only imagine that they are the gluable type i'm pretty sure they are the gluable type not lincoln lincoln length tracks i haven't seen any if i just go back through the sprues again i haven't seen any no no see that that definitely is germane to the summer venti so that is yes. everything yeah. there is what you get for the summer venti whereas that that's the engine deck the whole and the whole side so that all appears to be common because the but only it, difference really between the gun tank and the and the self-propelled gun that center section of the hull i think well, pretty you, much everything else is the same isn't it yeah look at that that is that's pretty much it it's kind of drop in yeah. a completely new section and you've got the tank yeah so we'll, we'll we'll wait and see but i would not be surprised rather it does look rather nice i have to say and rather curiously rather interestingly rather it's Larry do give you a very small photo etch sprue which yeah. is very welcome and we are hopefully fingers crossed we might actually be getting a hold of one of these in the next week or so so we I, will i really want to build this i think this is a really cool thing i, I also like the uh, the camouflage as well on this yeah, we don't know. It's got decals for four versions, so it's got German and Italian in there. So we're not entirely sure what <laughs> the other schemes are at the moment. But it does. Yeah, I'm. I think this is. It's a no brainer for Italy because it's a what yeah, one of the you know it is to Italy what the Sherman tank is to, you know to America. Yeah, I've I've always had a fascination with with this tank, which goes back to kind of like the Eschy days as well, but. You can guess what well you can guess what image I'm gonna queue up here, can't you? There it is. There it is. That's that's an Italy special there from Francois Berlinden because everything in that kit is Italy. The the two Italian tanks, the Panzer One and the Crusader and the figures as well. That's just a an Italy love in that. And and incidentally as well, as as a little bit of a background to that diorama. That diorama is built up of three other dioramas that were that were built um, specifically to showcase the original Eshi releases. Or four. Mm. I, I think one of the dioramas might have had two vehicles in, and then there were then there was two other dioramas uh, or kind of vignettes. Um, and then he decided for this for the the book for the Valendon Way to combine all of them together to create that much larger set piece. I, I really like that. It's yeah, absolutely classic. I, I think what people may not fully appreciate with Francois was that he wasn't precious about his dioramas. They were not fixed no. works of art. Is if he thought that he could improve or scavenge something from one diorama, he would. And the, like I say, these almost all of these uh, the, the the two Italian tanks and the Panzer were previously seen elsewhere, and he's recycled them and used them on this, but. No, I've, I've, for the best part of nearly 40 years now, I've looked at this diorama and I've thought one day I will build a Sovente and an M13. I just, just find them fascinating vehicles. Yeah. And well, like I say, with a bit of luck, we might actually be able to get hold of one very, very soon and do our own in depth mm. uh, look that at it. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, really but, but yeah, that's no idea on price yet, but. That is one I am really, really looking forward to. And do you know what? I'd still like to build the vintage Italy one and the vintage Tamir one. So, you know, I just, I'm like that. I like to see how the old old and the new yeah. kind of rub together. But talking of new, what have we got next? Okay. Um, the next thing that we're, we're taking a look at is fine moles. Uh, imminent release of the mcdonald douglas f4e j phantom this one here uh, this is going to be um their kind of showcase 70 second scale release i guess for this year and will delight fans not only of 
of this particular aircraft, but this particular aircraft in 72nd scale. The F4 EJ has been kitted in the past um, in many scales. Certainly in in 72nd scale, it's been kitted by Hasegawa, it's been kitted by Fujimi, it's been kitted, there was an original Hasegawa release, but this is a whole new box of tricks that, that they, they've decided to release. And, and like I say, it's the sort of kit that is going to please 72nd scale modelers who've seen releases of this particular variant come out from the likes of Hasegawa and um, seen um, the the new ones coming out from, um, oh, my brain has just completely gone. Um, uh, no, from, um, from uh, the new... Zukimura? Yeah, Zukimura. Thank right. you for, for that. Um, you can tell this isn't scripted, people. No, that was, that was awful. My brain completely went. Uh, from Zukimura, who are going to be producing um, a standard E, but you would imagine that at some point they'll also do a Japanese one. You can see from these images that the, this aircraft kit is really well detailed. Surface detail in particular is gorgeous. Mm. Uh, Fine Molds have released this as a specific F4 EJ, as you can see. They're not. There's no. There's no um, decision to produce it as as uh, another variant as a standard echo aircraft it's it is just going to be the japanese one to begin with they offer three sets of markings in this kit they offer two 302 squadron aircraft although they are from um from different air force bases one is from chateau's air force base the other from naha air force base but they also offer another aircraft in that which is the top one on this on this color on this um photograph that you see here and this is from the air proving wing at gifu this aircraft was one of the first two that mcdonnell douglas supplied from from um, from the factory in St. Louis in 1971, so it's quite a famous aircraft within that. So seeing this appear as part of the uh, as part of the options, I think is is an interesting inclusion. It all it I guess doesn't allow you to do quite as much as you would do with some of the squadron birds in terms of in terms of weapon loadouts and 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 weathering and that kind of thing. But I really like the idea that. That, that this one's included in there and, and certainly online if you if you go online you can read quite a bit about this the other thing about this this kit release as well is that it appears to be added to by two other releases that fine moles have announced um, lately one of which um, appears to be a weapon set that it that will specifically deal with with Japanese weapons that were carried on the F4. So as a result of that, they include Sparrows in there, um, Foxtrot and Mike version, Sidewinders, Echo, Lima, Mike and Papa. They also include AAM-3, 4 and 5 missiles for, for later variants and ASM-1 and 2 anti-shipping anti missiles that will go with this thing as well. But also they include something which I've been taking a look at this week, which is really interesting, and that's a set of plastic seat straps for the for the ejection seats both in the phantom and also designed for the f8 crusader as well um, mm. from what i can see of these uh, um, of these um, seat straps they must be minute in plastic and the, the 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 molding quality on them is superb i've seen some of the fine mold seat straps in 48 scale for some of the japanese aircraft that they produced um but i've never seen anything in 72nd scale quite like this so if you imagine edward metal seat straps but but um but produced in plastic that gives you an indication of, of what you're going to get from this so in concert with the kit the the additional weapons which kind of i suppose makes you turns your head back a little bit to the way that hasagawa approached their aircraft kits in years gone by where they would supply you with the basic airframe and then the a, a, a sort of a stock set suite of weapons and then anything else would come from an additional weapon set that seems to be where they're going with this so so with those three sets, with the basic kit, with the weapon set, with the with the seat straps, you're going to get a very detailed model. Um, I hasten to say straight from the box, but that's kind of the, the the impression that you get from this. And certainly seeing the model made up in very Hasegawa um, like way in the in the 
the the shots that we've seen online they they really um, reminded me of the way that Hasegawa kits were built for their catalogs and for the for the size of the box. This is a kit that I think is going to look really magnificent when it when it's well, uh, when it's finally released. They have split it up into two releases as well because there is also the Kai release as well, which I think is the nicer scheme. I just like that kind of air superiority kind of blue yeah. grey color and. Perhaps in terms of squadron markings, not quite as bold as yeah. the as the other one, but I do like that color scheme. Though I think yeah. you can see in, in that photograph there just that that difference in color schemes. I mean, you can see from that picture just how impressive this model looks. Mm. Um, it, 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 it's always a kind of a, a, a shorthand back handed compliment when people say oh it looks like it's 30 second scale when it's 70 second scale but in these images that that model really does look like it's a larger scale than 70 second but it's it, it almost from from just seeing the images of, of this model and comparing it to what we've seen um, recently um, whether it's the british phantoms that have come through from airfix or whether it's the the i think fairly short-lived academy kit of the J that mm. was released a few years back that, that didn't seem to do the rounds for very long. Um, this model almost looks like it's kind of closing the book on on phantoms mm. in, in this scale. I, I'm, 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 I'm hard pressed to think of a, of a, of a 72nd scale phantom model that is that is close to this one in terms of finesse and detail now rather curiously rather curiously i know people are going to go oh blimey no not a phantom but as as you said at the beginning that when you actually look at the f4 ej kits that have been produced in 70 72nd scale 1972 was the initial hasagawa release and that's mm -hmm. the one with the raised panel lines I, I i'm not kidding i looked at the sprues today it's got about 20 parts it is yeah, yeah. ridiculously easy to build the Fujimi kit was 1985. Yeah. And then the new tall Hasegawa kit, brand new recessed panel lines, was 1990. Yeah. So there has not been a new F4EJ kit yeah. for the best part of 30 years. Now, fine molds are going <laughs> to... F4EJs to the Japanese market are like Spitfires to the British market. Yeah, this I know, I know. People say license to print money, but this is honestly a license to print money. It, it is, is a, uh, it's it's long overdue. I know. I know people will roll their eyes at the thought of another Phantom, but this is this is significant mm. that that it's taken thirty years for another Japanese kit company to actually come back and look at the subject in seventy second scale. I, I mean, there've been, there've been sort of close some kits that have dabbled with that. The Airfix one, which had e e parts in it. And the um, and the Italeri G, which which was mm. a, a sort of a close approximation. But you're absolutely right. It's extraordinary that it's taken this long for us to have another F4E. And, mm. and I guess it's the, the same um, the same comments could be made on uh, uh, about Tsukimura's release of their F4E this mm. year. That, that we haven't really had anything like that for a long time either. Mm. Hasegawa's 48 scale kits probably date back to 1990, or, or maybe yeah. slightly earlier than that, maybe even the late 80s. Late um, 80s. So, so we, we, we're getting to the to a point where where you know arguably the the most impressive of the of the Phantom variants uh, um, has taken thirty years to 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 finally appear in, in in scale. The one thing that this is going to open up, and it may well open it up for for fine moles if they follow Hasegawa's route, or it may just open it up for the aftermarket decal companies. But the number of F four E J color schemes is legion. And we're, when these are standard squadron aircraft that are in there, the Kai and the stock one um, in the lighter color scheme, but there have been there have been myriad other schemes in disruptive camouflage with all sorts of markings on sharp mouths, everything. It, it would be it would be fantastic. So, so this is I think this is absolutely going to sell but i mean in japan this thing is going to sell by the thousands i mean tens of thousands possibly 
and I know that there are there are certain individuals from from these particular parts as well who are very excited about the possibility of getting their hands on on, on this. A a a, a noted notable pilot in particular has been raving about this release for uh, for quite some time. I was thinking also a occasional co-host of this show who's probably wishing in, he was on tonight talking about it. So. Indeed, indeed, he must be. Yes, he he does seem extraordinarily excited about the. I think I think there is half a dozen of them already in his uh, in his mind, in his virtual Init shopping basket. Yeah. Initially, so Initially. so so yes, yeah, so that is uh, that's Fine Mold's release of the F four EJ. Yeah, imminent release. Imminent plus the additional. Uh, two sets that, that yep. are designed to go with it. Now, I really should have had the X-Files music for this bit because this is where we, you know, we're kind of like seeing into the future and we predicted this next item. Well, we didn't predict it. We just took a wild guess and quite frankly, you know, throw enough of them out there and some of them will stick. A few weeks ago, we were talking about mini art. You might have heard of them. We sometimes mention them on this show. Mini art did a set of US infantry weapons and tank crew equipment and it was notable on mini arts facebook page that there were people complaining about oh where's the thompson machine gun oh you're missing all these items blah, 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 blah. and we said on this program we would not be surprised if mini art follow up with another release that's got all these missing items kel surprise they followed it up with all the missing items so <laughs> what do we have here well there you go we do have the Thompson submachine gun. In fact, there are the two variants there. There's the one with the standard clip and uh, the one with the foregrip and the 100 round C drum magazine, which I always think, you know, I, I see that. All I can see is uh, Spock in Star Trek from uh, a piece of the action episode when he's a gangster. So the Trekkies will know what I'm talking about. There's also in this set, a lot of, lot of useful items in here. I'm, I'm liking this already. You've also got another grease gun. You've also got a M M1919 Browning 30 cal. Various pistols, revolvers. You get them with holsters as well. Pioneer tools. We've got binoculars and cases. We've got grenades, daggers, ammo, belts, pouches. I like the three different style of helmets because you've got the netted, the standard, and you've got the kind of the fabric covered US Marine Corps style one. We've also got tanker helmets, water bottles. It's just one of those sets that, quite frankly, yeah, if I, if I saw it, I'd buy it on site and with the other one because, as, as we always say about mini art, you, these kind of things, you don't build them as kits. You, you buy them and you dip into them and you take out whatever you need for a particular project. But I think that is absolutely glorious. And if we just roll through the sprue bits and pieces here, Again, moulding detail is absolutely top notch, and yeah, I, I I don't know about you, Spencer, but I will be throwing money at this as soon as I see them. What I really like about this, I, I, I took a look at these um, at these shots earlier on, is the way that they are that they're attached to the runners, the parts mm. are attached to the runners, which means also they're very simple to to. To paint, especially the smaller parts, things like the water bottles, the ammunition pouches, that kind of thing. I, I'm, I'm also pleased to see that they, they've included the, um, the the 30 cals as well, because you know the detail on, on on kit items. This is the sort of thing that would work perfectly to add a little bit of gloss to some of the the the, the legacy builds that you and I have been indulging yeah. ourselves in, replacing some of the the, the more heavy handed of the parts. That, that 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 are part of those kit builds, but I think that this is a really really good set, uh, and mm. and, uh, and uh, we don't have a, a a price on on this, but but I would imagine that that this is going to be also um, very very reasonable in terms of of how much it costs. But it's going to be one of those sets that you are going, definitely going to dip in and out of. That that's mm. for sure. Um, so yeah, re really like it, and it, and 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 as we said before, we we imagine that that 
those parts that were missing from the initial release would come out in this in, in, in a secondary one. Although before anybody says, we didn't know. So we have no, you know, when we say these things, if we say something off the cuff, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can quote us. So yes, so another, uh, we're, we're now getting to the point where I think that we can just assume that there will be a slot every week for a mini art release. Honestly, it's it's just embarrassing. The thing is, I actually, at Telford a couple of years ago when mini art were, were there and they were giving away these little bags of freebies and things. I've actually got a very, rather nice red mini art t-shirt that I still haven't worn. Um, well, I'm tempted to wear it on this show, but the problem is if I wore it, people just think, oh, it's just... Welcome to the interesting model ca- modeling code sponsored by Mini Art. But, but the problem Fantastic. is, Fantastic. Mini Art just keep popping these things out. This is the this is the issue, and it's bless them. You know they are they're brilliant. We love them. We love them to bits. And like I say, we're not. It wasn't anything kind of terribly psychic. I think it was just kind of just kind of really obvious. Although I do predict you are going to be talking about. An aeroplane next. I am indeed going to be talking about an aeroplane. And I'm going to go back to a subject that we discussed a few weeks back. And that's mm. the Airfix Quick Build range. Mm-hmm. These are uh, the Airfix Pseudo Lego releases, for want of a much better description, that they have that are aimed for junior modelers, six and above, really. Um, and they're, they're there, they're nice and easy to build. They kind of click together and they replicate aircraft and vehicles. They've done all sorts of different aircraft subjects, but they've also done things like Volkswagen buses and all that, those kind of things. The latest release, or the latest um, aircraft to be released, because this is now shown for autumn 2020 release, which um, we're hoping means that it's it comes kind of before our weekend of uh, shenanigans in a month's time, is the F-35B Lightning II, which you can see here. Now, uh, looking at the photo, photographs of this thing, you would, you would have no idea that this was one of the Airfix quick builds because everything seems to go together so well on this thing. Airfix make a big point within their press release of saying that all of the sort of the, 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 the sort of peg and socket joints of the bricks that make up this this model are hidden on on the completed thing and that certainly seems to be the case the other thing about this as well is though that it offers a lot of features for a model that's ostensibly a toy for want of a a better description Mm -hmm. um it off it offers um, opening vent covers, it offers raised and lowered undercarriage, the, the jet pipe can be can be in alternate positions, tailons can be in alternate positions as well, you can have them drooped like this. The other thing I liked about this though uh, was that it also offers plenty of kind of detail uh, around the model. You can't really see them from these images, but it also looks like there's there's a little bit of copy detail. It's the kind of thing that you would expect from a beginner's kit. Now, on, on Wednesday, we, we did an entire program that was dedicated to Matchbox and dedicated to mm. Matchbox um, artwork, which you, you may well remember. And we discussed within that program that those Matchbox kits, those early Matchbox kits, were designed specifically for young boys to build. That's what mm-hmm. the artwork was for. And when you look at this type of kit that's come out from from Airfix, bearing in mind this is not a model that needs to be glued together Mm -hmm. and offers stickers rather than decals, you can see how much the hobby has evolved within that arena because this model is far more detailed than anything we would have seen back then from those early Matchbox kits. Mm -hmm. And... And, and as a result of that, this looks to be a very fine little model. And it certainly looks like an F-35B. It mm-hmm. certainly captures the, the aggressive and, and, and kind of angular look of, of the new fighter. I really like this. I, 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 I think this, this, this works perfectly for kids. It, mm-hmm. It's that kind of thing. It's easy to put together. And... And, and also, I don't know what colour this is going to be to be moulded in. I'm assuming it Great. will follow. It will yes, it will follow the the other releases in being moulded in in a colour that closely approximates the camouflage. So so if a six year old was to get hold of one of this, certainly a six year old that's been interested in building Lego kits, 
then they're going to end up with a very nice model to display in their bedrooms with precious little um, precious little effort, but it's mm. going to call. It's going to be something interesting that they can they can build and also learn a little bit about the aircraft. Mm -hmm. So, so Airfix to be uh, to be congratulated on on the release of this. They ha they have dealt with World War Two fighters, and I think they've done a Harrier and they've done a Hawk and they've done those kind of things. But this thing is different. This is a, the new airplane. So kids are going to be interested in seeing the new airplane the new aircraft that the RAF are, uh, are flying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good release, I think. We're hoping to try, if it is released, I think we're talking about trying to get hold of this thing for the for the, the weekend of the Nationals. We will, yeah, we will, the weekend for the Nationals. Not the Nationals, the weekend the that would have been the Nationals. We are, we, we are saying, we are, we are all still kind of like waking up and thinking, we've got to build models for Telford. Oh, hang about. No, no. Um, but... We are, yeah, we are hoping. We, we certainly will be doing some quick builds of a sort for the festival weekend, just just to show how well they go together. But also, hopefully, to kind of show what you can do with them mm. with a little bit of kind of sideways thinking. I have to say, I have been reconciled to the F thirty five this year, most certainly, having built the Italeri kit mm. because. Whatever my opinions of it of an aeroplane, I have to say when I when I finish that model with everything with the everything open and the bomb bays and the tail and the, the engine drooping and everything like that, did make for a fascinating looking model, I have to say. So I'm I I kind of like the F thirty five now. I I do like it. But yeah, this this does look like a really good release. So keep Keep your eyes peeled. Like I say, we'll, we'll hopefully do this one, but we certainly will be doing some quick builds for the festival. Yeah, now, certainly we we have no we have no idea of what the 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 stickers, which um, is actually what they are, we, what they will include, whether they will include anything sophisticated like those ram panels or anything like that, or just basic mm. markings. Um, but it'd be interesting to see how they that rounds off the package. I think absolutely. Another interesting aeroplane. Now, this pretty much came out of left field this week. I was not expecting this. I don't think any of us were, really. Or perhaps they were, and I've just been asleep. But it is Dora Wings, and it is their new 72nd scale Curtis Wright 89 Jeep. Now, if you're not familiar with this aeroplane, Best way of describing it is that it was a purposely unstable aeroplane. It was purposely built to be really tricky to fly. And that was apparently because it was used to train new pilots for the incoming multi-engined aircraft like the Marauder and like the P-38. So they wanted something that was going to be a bit of a handful. And, yeah, this... How can I describe it? It looks like a baby <coughs> expediter. It, it's mm. really weird looking, but it has a kind of, I don't know how to describe that. It has a kind of like a, an ugly duckling kind of charm to it, I think is a, a, a good way of putting it. I really like it. Yeah, I'm sold. Yeah, I think it's a great looking aeroplane. It's, it's, yeah. it's a bold venture from Dora, but the amount of detail they appear to be shoving in this and the, this these images are all from their facebook page but they they seem to be really kind of going for it and given you know what they've done with some of their previous kits yeah if if, if <laughs> the the 89 jeep isn't an airplane that's largely figured in my plans over the last five decades of building models but having now seen this I think it will at some stage because it just looks lovely, doesn't it? Mm. I can say with some certainty that before we, I started going through the script for today, um, I'd never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I had literally, I don't think I'd ever clapped eyes on one of these. Um, but, you, but you see, this is the perfect counterbalance to this. Again, this is this is kind of nice how this kind of weirdly works out tonight, because for all the people who go, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not a phantom. It's like, well, there you go. There's an 189 Jeep. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I particularly like that view of it on the ground. Mm. 
it's 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 i think it's it's actually really interesting looking touch of and the I, grumman sky touch of the grumman i need to call it a sky rocket oh what's it called that that grumman thing with the twi twin engines and the the fuselage i know what i mean it's got it looks like that airplane people will tell me what it is but i like it i like that scheme i have to say yeah that's great yeah, uh, really, really nice. Apparently, post-war, they wouldn't let them go into private hands simply because it was such a handful to fly. Yeah. But very fascinating little aeroplane. So, Dora Wings, congrats, you know, well done. That took us all by surprise this week. And, and, and these are the sort of models that in days gone by would have been VAC forms. Yes. But the, the idea that we're now starting to see these as... as as, as sort of mainstream plastic kits is uh, shows how the hobby has developed and, and, yeah, and, how, and how how now we can't ever assume that nothing is going to be released as a plastic model kit because we're starting to see subjects that would have been almost impossible to conceive um, before before the the technology that's now available to designers to create these these plastic kits. Yeah, that would have been a that would probably be an, a rare. Yeah, there you go. The rare planes did it as a vac form. Apparently, um, we're co we're commenting to ourselves tonight. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Tiger cat crossed with a Cessna crane. Yeah, absolutely. Indeed. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, that's a that, that's a really good show. And I, I, and I'm sure that's eight hundred. That's a that's a lot of them as well. There's... Yeah, they built eight hundred of the things. Um, it's, I think I think a bit like us. I think a lot of modelers are going to be learning a lot more about the 89 Jeep in the next year when they when this kit comes out because love it you know like I say you the technology is changing this hobby to the point now where we are you know these as you say things that used to be the domain of vac forms or the limited limited run kits is we're now just getting for want of a better phrase to mere quality products it's yeah yeah, and, people, yeah, and people still complain about this hobby. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I know. Yeah. Sometimes you. It, yeah. Sometimes you do do wonder. Yeah. I, I saw today somebody suggest that that, that we should have a, a twenty fourth scale wimpy kit being released. And anyway, so which leads us very right, good, very neatly good. on, neatly on to our to our next. Um, news item, and that's the the release by Airfics imminently of three members of their 124 scale aircraft kit range. That this is going to form part of their vintage classic range. So far, they've done a lot of smaller kits, but now they're going to go the whole hog and they're going to release three of the 24 scale kits, which I'm sure you're you're very aware of. We have mentioned this already in, in passing, but now we have more information on this. And that will be the, the Spitfire, the Messerschmitt 109E, and the Hulk Hurricane. Those will be the three that, that get released. 80th uh, anniversary of the Battle of Britain. So yeah. yeah. So that's that's kind of what it is. Now they have produced if we go through these in, in order, um they are essentially they're exactly the same plastic parts that you that you will all have recognized but there are new decals within those kits within boxes that are adorned by the original artwork they have vintage classics on the on, on the box so you can't be in any doubt that these aren't new kits and also on the instruction sheets which i think is a really nice inclusion it says airfix super kit 124 scale which I think is a fabulous inclusion, and whoever came up with that idea should be applauded quite roundly. Um, so yeah, fabulous. Um, so the the three that have been released are Spitfire, Measurement One and Nine, and the Hurricane. If I go through each of these in turn and give you an idea of the of the color schemes, the Spitfire will include. A supermarine um, will include a Mark One A flown by Jack Coleman of Fifty Four Squadron, Hornchurch in Essex. This one makes mention on the instruction that um, optional roundels are included, different sized roundels. I think for the fuselage. Yes, and this takes into account new information and and contradictory information as to which 
size roundels were included on the instruction sheets. If my memory serves me from going back earlier on today when I was doing my research, I think one of them has a seven inch diameter yeah. um, um, red dot in the middle. So those are given as options on on in within this kit and it is noted within the instructions as well for those mm -hmm. who want additional information on that. The second scheme within this kit is another Mark 1A. This is from 602 City of Glasgow Squadron um, and this is an um, LOB. So this is from East Lothian during 1939. The second kit to be released will be the Messerschmitt 109E. This has um, the original box art not the not the later no, the, artwork, original, the original original box art from the very first release this includes two aircraft the first one is a 109e3 from uh, jacques schwader 26 france summer of 1940 and the second one is uh, helmet um, helmet wicks aircraft from uh, jg2 richthofen different color schemes one is in that beautiful um, um, Battle of Britain, classic Battle of Britain scheme. Mm. That one there with the with the the, the blue fuselage sides and the, the two tone grey upper surfaces. The other one includes includes mottling on the fuselage sides and a yellow nose. Personally, i would go for the first one because mm -hmm. it, it is the classic Battle of Britain scheme. And when I build this kit, and I, and I will be building one of these. That that will be the scheme that I that I choose. This, the third choice is the Hawker Hurricane, perhaps the the best of the three kits to be released. This one has stood the test of time remarkably well. Still a beautiful kit. This one includes again two color schemes. The first one is um, is Gleed's aircraft from eighty seven Squadron from Devon 1940. This one has also got some additional information within the instructions for a red flash that has been included. I assume on the decal sheet, I, you can perhaps confirm that to me, yeah. um, but a, a red flash behind the spinner. When Roy Cross originally drew, um, painted his artwork, his box art, he didn't include that, that red flash, but it appears from information that has been gained over the years since that beautiful artwork was done, that Gleed's aircraft may well have had that red flash. So that is included within the kit. The other thing that's included within within the kit is um, optional roundels with, with dull red and bright red. I assume that that's, again, is that is that for for additional information, or is that simply as 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 a weathering option? No, it's it's because there is there is a certain ambiguity as to I think some of the I'm going to mangle my history here, so I'm going to get hauled over the coals. But I think some of the Gloucester built Hurricanes may have had the brighter red. Right. But it's nobody can really quite tell. So. Just hedge your bets and include both. And you've included both. Okay. Mm. And the, the second scheme within that is Peter Townsend's aircraft from 85 Squadron Church Fenton. And this one, North Yorkshire, October 1940, um, a fairly standard looking hurricane, but doesn't it look glorious in that camouflage scheme? Mm. Absolutely gorgeous. I am very much one of those people that prefers the Hurricane to the Spitfire. I think the Hurricane is a better looking airplane than the Spitfire. I know I'm going to get shot to pieces for this, but I do. In um, it's it's just got a kind of pugnacious air to it, I, and I I just love the way it looks, and it looks fabulous in those those colours. So these three kits are 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 going to be joining the range within that Vintage Classics um, mm. range over the next over the coming months they're, they're due again they're due imminently don't expect any changes to the to the to the molds don't expect any changes to the plastic parts but you will very much get changes to the to the decal sheets and the instructions and i think that that adds a, a level of gloss on top of what was previously available within within these kits certainly within within the earlier releases where where if you've bought one of those kits maybe second hand the decals might not be up to the standard that you would expect they may have degraded also i think within reissues 
the decals have certainly been nowhere near the quality of the uh, of those that are now appearing within within Airfix kits. So there is an argument with with these kits. Yeah, they're very old. They're ancient. I, I've no. I've I've seen online that, that a few people have been criticising the the Airfix um, Spitfire in particular, saying it doesn't go well together and all of that kind of thing. But I would suggest that these models are there to test your metal a little bit and also offer you the possibility with some with some kind of um, knowledge and, and basic modeling skills and some forethought to create some really impressive uh, impressive models. We've all seen these ones made up, but I think you you've got a chance to build something quite quite impressive from each of these kits but if you go to town on them and start adding detail and start reworking them you can create masterpieces from this because essentially all three of these kits are really accurate in terms of their mm. outline so so with care and attention you will be able to create three very accurately scaled and shaped models of three of the most famous aircraft ever to take to the skies Loving the idea that these have been released. Loving the idea that these have also will appear with the original box art and the new decals. And I, for one, cannot wait to get hold of all three of these and start working on them. I, I think it should also be pointed out that these, that the all the schemes in these reissues are, they are the original kit schemes. So it's not a case of. Well, the A scheme is has to match Roy Cross's artwork, but the B scheme is something completely new. Yeah, all three of these kits, the 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 two schemes in each of the kits, they are the same schemes that would have appeared in the original releases. I think the only things, as Spencer has said, is just minor tweaks to bits of bits of accuracy to them. For example, the Drem Spitfire. Going through photographs and lots and lots of photographs of these aircraft, it became apparent that actually they did carry the smaller roundels on the upper wings. Yeah, and that, and it's from that period of Spitfire camouflage where <laughs> almost kind of everything and anything went when it uh, went when it came to when it came to the camouflage, the camouflage and the the roundels. And in fact, there is a famous photograph of. 19 squadron spitfires from the that kind of pre-war period when they've all got they're all in a kind of dark green dark earth but with the b type roundels on the fuselage and when you look at the photograph the size of the roundels on the upper wings all vary the positions all vary some aircraft only have one roundel on the upper wing <laughs> couple of them have no roundels on the upper wing so it it is anybody who has this idea that somehow there was there was a guy there like a modeling judge with a clipboard making sure you know every single aircraft met a particular standard no i have to say that drem scheme is fabulous I think that's that's the one I would go for. I love yeah. the little roundels I think they look brilliant and the black and white underneath looks looks fabulous as well. It's yeah. it's a very attractive scheme. I had this kit as a kid, and my father rather kindly bought it for me for I think it was my sixth birthday, and then instantly declared that it was far too complicated for me to build and built it himself. So uh, that was always nice. But I still have the instruction sheet, the actual color instruction sheet, in my collection, wow. which is very which was very useful when it came to actually doing this. So. Yeah, I I like that scheme. I just think that is really. I don't think any Spitfire with black black undersides to the wings always looks cool in my in my book. But yeah, yeah, like I yeah, say, eightieth eightieth anniversary of the Battle of Britain, so it's a bit of a no brainer that these these come back for another airing because they 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 literally are vintage classics. I mean, that Spitfire in, is indeed. fifty this year. Indeed, and, and and to give you an idea of, of, of how some modelers um, uh, approach these things, a particular Nick Greenall, who we all know um, very well, is working on one of these very kits, and he is essentially doing to this what he did to the to oh, his Sea Harrier. Yeah. So that'll give you an indication of, of where he's he's going with with this. 
I think it, it they are they are models to work on. Some of them, the Hurricane, I think would you could essentially build that from the box. It looked great. The other two, I think you would need, need a bit of TLC. But I'm convinced that you could create something fabulous from from each of these with with some care and attention and no little input from a black and white cat. I was going to say he has to he has to get in here somehow. Um, I if I can find the time in the in the autumn to actually build one of these i would love to build the spitfire but i would build it straight from the box and just concentrate on doing a really good weathered paint scheme because because to me there is a certain challenge in building these things stock mm. in terms of construction but then seeing and we've been doing it with these tamir classics is then going to town on the paintwork so that just for that, even if it's just a few seconds, that people think, wow, you've really kind of detailed that. And it's like, no, I haven't. I just I just painted yeah. it, but I just took a little <laughs> bit more time with the paintwork, which goes back to what we were talking about, those quick build kits. There's a couple in there where I think that if you went in and did like a really – I think I'm thinking they, they do a, like a Challenger tank, and but also that either the Volkswagen Beetle or the camper van. But if you were to go in there and do like a really nice kind of weathered finish, Mm. I think for a split second, people wouldn't realise that these were essentially moulded yeah. Lego. You know, for want of yeah. a better phrase. I, I agree, and and we've seen we've seen uh, Jan Wright built one of the Volkswagen Beetles and it looked great. Even you know looked really really good. So yeah, I th I think that's the that's the approach. Certainly, like I said, the one and nine will be the will be the one I go for because. I got the book off you, didn't I? And, and we, which we talked about last time. So I, I'm planning on super detailing this thing and and uh, and, and rebuilding all of the cockpit and that, the whole nine yards. I think I'm going to go. I'm going to do. I think I'm going to try and do what with this one and nine. What I did with the Harrier. I mm. think I'm going to go that far with it and see how how much I can I can get it to to really shine. I, I think that's the that's the plan I'm going to go for. Trivial point with the Spitfire was this was the first Spitfire kit in any scale to get the scallops. Right. There's no Spitfire kit prior to that included the scallops. All of them did that underwing section is completely flat. Yes, indeed. Yes. So it I, I mean it's it's hard to kind of forget how groundbreaking that kit was when it came out and, and i think 50 years ago and i think i've told you this story about about traveling on the train as a young boy back from darlington to the to the midlands and sitting on the train and opposite me on the train carriage was a guy who bought one and he was sat upright on the seat i'd mm. never seen a kit box that big before and it was sat up on the with airfix logo on it and everything i think i must have stared at it for the entire journey back it was you know and and they were mind-blowing kits back then when in the days of of 70 second scale aircraft kits these things were mind-blowing so yeah to see them to being re-released is is a very good thing and we can only hope that this is the first tranche of the the collection and the airfix decide amongst their other vintage classics range that they that they go for the other 70 uh, the other world war ii 24 scale aircraft kits would, which would be the stuka the 190 and of course the p51 mustang interesting you mentioned the 190 We're, we've actually hit our We've actually hit our self-imposed deadline, but I think we'll run on for about another five, ten minutes tonight. Yeah. Is I was reading that we didn't get a chance to do this midweek, but I think we'll perhaps we'll skirt this now and perhaps we'll do it midweek again. Yeah. Is I was reading that review build article in that issue of Scale Models on oh, the, the one ninety. Yeah. The one written by John Barnes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, not only did he dribble past the Brazilian defence and put the ball in the back of the net <laughs> at the, uh, it, it, you know, in their own in their own stadium. But then went back into the dressing room and wrote a brilliant article on building the Airfix for Call for Nightmare. Um, there is actually, funny enough, in, in, in Porlock, there is a John Barnes Court. There's a little annex called John Barnes Court. 
It's right next door to Pollard's Court. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Then, but yeah, it's a really good. It's a really good article. It's it's fabulous, isn't it? Yeah, mm. it, it really is. And 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 bearing in mind what he had to work with, and bearing in mind the sort of the materials that he worked with back then, it's a masterpiece, isn't it? The finished model. Well, I tell you what, I think this will be this will be partly what we will discuss on the midweek show Wednesday, yeah. because I will pull out some scans of the Gerald Scarborough books as well. Because when you see what he did with, mm. with those things, especially that hurricane, and we're talking about, you know, mid 1970s, it's yeah. phenomenal bootstrap modeling. If I can yes. still play from Jack Monroe, yeah. but it is just stunning. And, and the one, one of the things that, that that's always, makes me raise an eyebrow slightly whenever I'm reading those articles and, and, and back then is super glue was only just about kind of coming in when I started reading magazine articles. Can you imagine building those models back then without using super glue for some of the parts well, and, gonna, and, and quick setting say, adhesives for some of the pieces? I was going to say, so when super glue came out in the, what was it? The midish. 1970s hideously expensive mm. really re i mean i can remember 1993 i had to go out and buy a tube of super glue just you know a little tube of super glue and it was something like three pounds 29 yeah I, I can now get well i can now get a six pack of a uh, four pack of super glue at poundland for a pound but also i can get Decent kind of boss stick and Evo stick and all those kind of things. You know, actual branded gel super glue, a quid. Well, well, yeah. I mean, you, you, there are photographs in there, and again, we can talk about this on Wednesday because I think it's an interesting subject. Actually, um, when you see models made by modelers such as Chris Gannon, who was scratch building biplanes, mm. and 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 Ray Rimmel's work when he was building biplanes back then and making them out of vac forms and rigging them. The idea of rigging models without super glue and using only adhesives that were available to them at that at that point, slow setting adhesive, actually gives me the jitters just to I, think about it. Did we did we did we we kind of slightly oh he's going now, he's off. Did we kind of slightly half heartedly mention the tube glue challenge? We we did uh, mention that, we that did, did not yes. Happen. Not only happening. Not only did we mention the tube glue challenge, we mentioned the tube glue and enamel challenge, I think, as well. Yeah, I can tell you right now that my days of using a pin to apply the adhesive are long gone. It ain't happening, bro. Not happening. I think you just, I just think you're just bottling it. I think, you yeah, know. absolutely. Well, I am bottling it and I'm bottling it like this. So, <laughs> yes, yes. In Indeed. Uh, on that dreadful note, um, I think I think we shall wrap it for tonight. I think that's been a good Indeed. a good spread of subjects tonight, inevitably involving mini art. But there we go. Indeed. Any any other business, Mister P? Well, I'm planning to go away now and write. I mustn't forget the name Zuki Mora ever again because it's embarrassing a hundred times. Well, that's okay because I also. Uh, Mike Williams has reminded me it was the Grumman Skyrocket. For some reason, I thought I was going to say Grumman Skyrocket, and I was thinking, yeah, but the Grumman Skyrocket was that kind of white jet with the sweat wings and the pointy nose. Now, that was no, the, no, it was the thing with no. the propellers. Yeah, I know. So, uh, I need to get a, I need to get a vintage Ravel catalogue just to re uh, reacquaint myself with it. Dave Fleming with his his ten day biplane challenge which is i think it's on day 30 now isn't it dave he says i used to i once used boss stick to rig a biplane actually the stretch glue it looked good what was a pain well, yes i've actually done that with aerials with boss stick where you put a blob of boss stick on the top of the aerial let it dry slightly and then drag it across to the next aerial and then and then sort of lock it onto the top so that the actual aerial wire is glue that, yeah. go, that goes off. Um, before we go, we obviously have a, a, a midweek show, which we've, we've lined up. But I do believe that we may not 
we may not be alone this week. That I we am, have another presenter. I am hoping we will wheel him out of semi-retirement to give us his wisdom and his blessings. So, will will negotiations are ongoing? But I, I believe said presenter is not working elsewhere this well, week. Well, we'll see what we'll we'll work him over and see what we can do. We, we can get him in 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 place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Anthony Crean says hi, lads. Hi, Anthony. Hello. Hiya. So that's it for tonight. Um, it's a bit exciting, isn't it? I mean, we've we've been we've been across Facebook and. Twitter, you've upset ten Kiss fans, which is absolutely <laughs> hilarious. Sorry, not moment... sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, this will be remembered Sunday night. Remember this Kiss Gate? Um, <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, they'll be banging on the door later on. Ah! So, Simon Mayo on Radio Five. This is about ten years ago, and uh, he was interviewing somebody, and he said something along the lines of, um, "Somebody made some disparaging comment about a band," and Simon Mayo said, "He said, oh, if there's," he said, "I wouldn't say that, but if there's one band, if there's one group of fans you don't want to make angry, he said that's Marillion fans." And I thought, "Yes, Indeed. Simon, you don't want to make us angry." So. <laughs> Absolutely not. We may act, we may even go to the uh, to the to the kitchen and make another cup of tea and mm. quietly fume about such things. Absolutely. Right, on that note, we will bid you farewell for this Sunday evening. And like I say, we will see you midweek for the midweek. I haven't even thought of a title for it, but it's going to be in the midweek something or other. And yeah, we will try and talk about our, we were going to talk about our favourite modelling journalism. We there are. also may be another quiz. Wow. Well, given I, how difficult the last one was. It might actually be the Matchbox Name That Kit box <laughs> art challenge. Oh, God. Mm. <laughs> oh, really? With, yeah. uh, with, with Roy Huxley's broad sweep of... Uh, of so I shouldn't see. I shouldn't have said that now because you will now be going, <laughs> studying my, book yeah, studying next. everything. So don't worry, I'll find a way of making it difficult for you. Doing John Barnes homework. says, "Is it over yet?" Yeah, it's over, John. <laughs> so thank you, everybody who's tuned in tonight on Facebook and Twitter. We will see you midweek. So from me, it's bye, and for me, it's bye. So take care, be sensible. See you during the week.